We have a lot to discuss and go over in this episode. In light of BlackRock's recent significant statement regarding cryptography, the institutions are demonstrating their commitment through a picture that is accurately written and created. The composition indicates that institutions are making a significant significant capital that is expected to arrive in the markets, which we will examine further. Bitcoin we're also going to discuss XRP. And let's dive straight into the incredible information that David Schwartz is revealing about the XRP ledger. Excuse me, Bitcoin is 65 or 62,000. Mio, have I apologized, Snee? 62,532 Bitcoin Bitcoin has experienced a decrease of 83% in the past 24 hours. 24 after 24 hours, Ethereum has dropped 74% compared to USDT and USDC, both of which are currently trading at 99 cents, while XRP is trading at a relatively low 53 cents. It's unavailable. 47% of the overall market capitalization of cryptocurrencies is $186 billion. Where are we going? As we discussed yesterday on the podcast, I believe that Bitcoin will rise to $66,000, and as my colleague Keith pointed out, the entire cryptocurrency industry will be valued at $2 trillion, $186 billion. He continues, I think this looks fantastic even now. He asserts that Bitcoin functions as a mathematical machine and presents two charts that illustrate the same period eight years ago. As you can see, we have been following this blue lineup right now. We are positioned next to the parabolic blow-off top, which is where Bitcoin is located. As you can see, we can expect a significant decline. Given that we previously discussed the fill-in CME gap as being in the low to mid $50,000 range, I believe we'll only reach 66 before descending. Let's take one final step backward before moving forward. This is a precursor to the anticipated 150 to 170,000 Bitcoin print. This chart shows all of the bull runs. That since 2012, Bitcoin has possessed what do you think of this? Stunning the arrows indicate our current movement, while the rising white line indicates our path toward the parabolic blow-off tops. All of this leads us between the 1.27,262 Fibonacci levels, which are almost your guaranteed levels for Bitcoin on this chart, which range from 105 up to 177,000. We started in 2016, and it expanded to those buddies, so if we do see that parabolic blow-off top, which we saw in 2012, we may be looking at $317,000 Bitcoin. That's correct. That's what you heard. The price of Bitcoin has accurately increased from $317,000 to a maximum of $479,000. The question at hand is whether we will see this parabolic blow up top. It's too soon to determine the initial targets. Between 105 and 177,000 will be our first region of interest at 1.618 FIB. We have the option to review the charts and determine our course of action. If the next round of institutional money fails to arrive as predicted, which should provide us with a $7 to $10 trillion boost, then we can expect a parabolic blow-off peak. Although the parabolic blow-up top is unlikely to occur, the targets between the 1.2 and 1.618 Fibonacci levels will still be visible. This left Bitcoin reached these levels 12 years ago, or more, during the bull run if one of your greatest moves confronts you, it's best to retreat. See who wins here. Here is a preview of the images. Thus, this is going to be among the most prominent metaverses incorporated into the XRP ledger continues to deliberate on this matter. In just over a week, we will begin the fifth month of a six-month construction, so it will hit hard and quickly. Just before Christmas, in mid-December, our build will come to a close. Could you say what a wonderful Christmas present, hey? David Schwartz is here, discussing the XRP. The XRP ledger specifies that the only accepted currency for transaction fee payment is XRP. To cover these costs, each transactional party needs XRP. The sole each account can only possess XRP as its sole asset, as it has no counterparty, no jurisdiction, and is not subject to clogging or freezing. 
Features like auto bridging that provide its structural advantages on the XRP ledger. However, if a stablecoin can regarkens regardless of what happens to the RLUSD, most of what XRP does is better than what XRP receives, and XRP will lose more than one or more stablecoins, as we discussed. A lot of nonsense claiming that Ripple will stop using XRP in its payments, even though it needs it before it runs on the ledger. While XRP has abandoned Ripple, the stablecoin remains intact. The stablecoin is built on the XRP ledger, which means that whenever the stable currency is used, XRP is also utilized. It is crucial to remember that every transaction that passes through the ledger will use XRP for additional transactions. XRP increases in value with increased usage. The more XRP burns, the more deflationary it becomes, leading to a supply plus situation. Demand begins to increase, and as prices climb, my forecast that the stablecoin will be available at Swell will hold. They'll make the announcement. That is what I would anticipate. They announced Swell, but it was already live. They also showed us samples of transactions and who was using them. We have observed numerous instances of this stablecoin being minted. Andrew is Andrew, like humans, should be aware of the structural advantages of the XRP ledger, as stablecoins have the potential to replace XRP as a bridge. It all, since XRP is the native asset of the ledger and was intended to be the best bridge asset from the start. That's all you need to know, right there, for those who still recall the slide. There is only one Brazil, people and that is where I released Black Rock. The same Brazil that saw Ripple holding private talks with central banks is also home to the world's first bank utilizing XRP for cross-border payments. Let's get started. Black Rock was recently featured in the press, where they gave presentations and discussed Bitcoin. I would like to draw your attention to Black Rock, a 10 trillion asset manager whose total assets exceed 10 trillion. According to Black Rock, Cryptocurrency is increasingly being adopted through fast internet and mobile phones. Even if we achieve just 1% of this $10 trillion, it will still be a significant victory. I think that between 5 and 10% of BlackRock's investors will exit the company and enter the cryptocurrency markets. Now, pay attention to what the head of thematic investing at BlackRock has to say. I often contemplate the future and the disruptive events that are impacting the world, society, and economy in our surrounding areas. We discovered that blockchain technology and digital assets are among the fastest growing technologies we've seen in recent years. The chart displays our adoption curve on the right side. Usually, this is about disruptive technologies, other times, it's about societal changes. This is only examining the rate at which a society adopts certain assets, and it is evident that digital assets and blockchain are catching on more swiftly than a significant revolution, either through cell phones or the internet, and there are a few reasons behind that. To begin with, our economy is more digitally native than ever. If we consume things online, stream videos, play video games, or purchase digital content, it makes sense to have digitally native assets to conduct those transactions. This is particularly relevant in a year like this one, when not only are elections taking place in the United States, Mexico, India, and the European Union, but people worldwide are also casting ballots for new leaders, leading to increased geopolitical risk and a decline in public confidence in institutions. More mistrust has made the need for a global monetary alternative more pressing. The third trend we're observing pertains to changes in the population. Mistrust in political institutions to uphold law and order or in central banks to manage inflation the Gen Z and millennial generations are on the rise. Millennia at least in the U.S., we expect millennials to inherit trillions of dollars of wealth as they approach their prime earning millennials stand out from previous generations due to their status as digital natives, having grown up with the internet and their increasing importance in the economy and employment. We are more inclined to use digital currencies because we understand digital assets better than earlier generations do when it comes to computers. Lastly, I believe that the development of digital asset infrastructure has been crucial to BlackRock's progress in using digital assets. Native landscape has changed to become more supportive of digital assets and how individuals can purchase them, 
and we have witnessed the movement of billions of dollars in venture capital and private equity into digital assets to fund amazing blockchain innovation. That's a very significant statement from BlackRock about how we've seen the regulatory landscape shift and how people's perspectives on the digital asset markets have begun to shift. That's what adoption requires. Restrictions are necessary, and while they are becoming more liberal, they still fall short of being the best or the greatest. T, but laws will be crucial if cryptocurrency is to move forward into 2025 and allow for the entry of 7 to 10 trillion dollars into these markets, allowing us all to become extremely wealthy.